Welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going off script a little bit again, and one of the main reasons, there's actually two reasons for that. One is I'm going to be using a CAN bus tool head, and that CAN bus tool head is a different than the stock. It's not something you're gonna find in the manual. Um, there are some benefits to running CAN bus, and I'll show those here in a second. The other reason, uh, this, this might be a little confusing because I, the footage that you're going to see is for the Mellowfly SHG 36 V2. Um, I'm also going to show you what I ended up ultimately going with, which is the BTT EBB 36. It's a long story, but basically uh, the Canvas board that I had originally just had some firmware issues and I, I didn't happen to have a spare. Uh, so I ended up going the BTT route. Those boards are very similar for the most part. The only difference is really the connectors and of course the firmware that you're going to flash to them. As you see the video progress, you're going to see the steps that I took to get everything crimped and soldered on. There are presently several different ways that you can run CAN bus. I'm doing it a very simple way and I am actually only going to be using the SKR Pico as pictured here. This little transceiver board and I'll have links to this in the description. And of course the tool head that I already showed. Another popular option of running CAN bus would be with the UTC or UTOC board, which is basically an additional piece of hardware in between that helps facilitate the CAN bus communication. The CAN protocol has continued to evolve in Clipper. With some of the latest changes, I think running a transceiver and just the SKR Pico, along with the Raspberry Pi and the tool head, are totally acceptable. Here's a close up of both boards. I started out with this board and then I ended up going with this board. And really, there's, they're pretty much the same board. They're very similar. Um, the difference is this one has JST PH connectors, which are a little bit smaller and a little more challenging to crimp. And then this one primarily has XH connectors, which are a little bit larger pitch, and you can use a standard JST XH connector for these. This one comes with the PH connectors. Actually, they both, they both do come with connectors. This one uses a four pin connection that's kind of laid out like that, which is more of like a Molex style. This one uses this new fangled uh, XT30 plus two connector. I've never actually heard of this, but I would say this is a better connector from what I've seen. I have used XT30s on things like my drones in the past. And um, let's see, this one has one. This is kind of what a normal XT30 looks like, but these XT30 plus twos have an additional two pin connector here. Now the Mellifly does include the connector with, with some wire that should be long enough. There you can see the connector on it. The install and the firmware are gonna be slightly different for each board. One other thing that I'll point out is the Big Tree Tech board has buttons on it, which makes it really easy if you need to um, like jump it into boot mode or reset it or, or load firmware or whatever. This one is a little bit more challenging. Um, there's no, there's actually no boot pins on it. There is a way, I guess, to get it into DFU mode by shorting a really small resistor, but um, I'm, I'm not sure that that's great. You shouldn't have to mess with boot pins anyway on, on this board when you do the flash procedure, only if something goes catastrophically wrong. Both these boards are going to be running CAN bus and they're going to be treated as its own MCU. The BTT board is running an STM32 chip this one is running a Gihi or Gihi. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it, but basically not a STM32 chip, but something uh, similar. They both have TMC 2209 drivers. You can see here in the corner, and that's what's gonna run the extruder motor. The main connections that I have on the V0 are going to be the thermistor, the part cooling fan, the uh, heater hot end fan, and then the, there's only two fan ports, so I ended up making a Y cable to connect the part cooling fans, which is what that is here. There's also some screw terminals for the hot end heater. And then you've got your extruder motor right here. Honestly, that's about all you really need. This does have a built-in uh, accelerometer on it, so you can run input shaping without having to install a separate one. And then of course I've got the, the cable loom. The only thing that's running in that cable loom, um, there's four wires total, two that are gonna be coming right off of the power supply and that's the 24 volt. And then the other two are going to this uh, transceiver here that you can barely see. So that's the green and the can high and the can low, the green and yellow wires. One thing that you'll notice is that there's not typically, typically when you have a, a Voron Zero connected to the tool head, all of the, like most of these other connections are gonna be populated, but 
That's not the case here because we're running this as an MCU over CAN. So that's one of the benefits of doing it this way. The other huge benefit, of course, is that if you want to disconnect your tool head, you can do that very easily. Um, you can remove everything right here. You don't have to worry about coming here, taking off the back panel and removing things. So I would say that's probably the biggest advantage. Honestly, it probably is a little bit of an overkill, but it is what it is, and I like it. And before I start connecting everything, I'm going to double check which one of these is the hot end fan because I forgot to check that when I was wiring it. So I'll go ahead and remove this and mark it. I'm going to use some zip ties to just tidy up the wiring a little bit now that I've got my fan marked. I just put an H on there for hot end. Luckily, this tool head's pretty easy to remove too, so if you do need to do maintenance on it or get in there and check something like I just did with the fan. Now when you are tightening these down, be careful, don't pull real hard because you don't want to break the plastic tab here. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. There is a little bit more going on on this side as you can see here. Get my hand out of the way there so you can see what's going on. I'm just putting the zip tie around this. And ideally, if you can tuck these wires in a little bit behind, that's where you want them. It's not really going to hurt anything because even if they are touching the belts, because those belts, they're moving, but they're moving with the tool head. And then I'll go ahead and, now that I've got that secured, I'll just go ahead and trim the zip tie. I'm getting ready to plug the hot end fan in. I'm going to use HE0, but unfortunately, if you can, as you can see here, this is using a JST-XH, and I believe the pin headers on here are PH, which are a smaller pitch. So here's the wiring diagram. I did just go ahead and print it out and I'll post a link to it, but this is for the SHT 36 V2. I've got the first connector in here on the Mellifly. In case you're crimping these yourself, you need the one millimeter or the 1.0 for the uh, wire crimp and the 1.4 for the jacket crimp. Those worked for well for me. And luckily these were included in my Mellifly uh, box. I think there's plenty here even if you make a few mistakes. Now since I have two part fans but only one fan connector left, I'm going to go ahead and make an adapter that connects here and this is the fan one port. So I've got my hot end fan on fan zero and my my part fans are going to be on fan one. So I'm going to make a little Y adapter that comes off here and then uses regular JSTs to connect to these. The way that I'm going to make this cable, I've already taken some 26 gauge wire and kind of twisted it up here together. This is going to be two ends for the JSTs, and I'm going to combine this right here. And this end's going to go to the tool board. So I'm going to use some solder and just melt that together. Go ahead and tin this end. It's not going to take much either. And then I'll put a little on this just to get it to stick. It's always a good idea to tin your wires before you solder them. And now that I've got solder on both ends of the wires, I'm just going to come over here all right and now what i would like to do as well is put some heat shrink on there to cover that up i'm just going to run it up there and you can use a heat gun or whatever you have handy even a soldering iron usually i use a heat gun and i just did the same thing with the red wire so now we're ready to put the jst on the other end on the receiving end of these and now i'm going to be preparing the jst part this is a little bit unconventional, but it does work. I've done this plenty of times with drones. You just got to be careful not get too much solder on this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do the black pin on here. Put a little heat shrink on there before you solder it. And then I'll slide that over. And then I will heat shrink it. This time I'll just go ahead and use the, I'm going to do the red one on the other pin. Okay. So that's on there. I'll just slide my heat shrink over it now. And you want to make sure that when you do this, you get the polarity correct. Okay, and now I'm just going to go ahead and finish this one up. I've already tinned it, and now I've got the heat shrink on it. I can slide it over. I'll just go ahead and solder this up. All right, that is on there nice and good. And we'll use the soldering iron to get it nice and hot and covered. There we go. Now these are ready to be used. Double check the polarity before you plug in the fan or before you power it up for sure. And then I also still have to make the other end that goes into the board. That's just a simple JST connection. 
So now I have these two extra small JSTs crimped and I can plug them into the fan port. Okay, now you can see it in action here. This is a little bit longer than I probably needed it, but I will plan on using the strain relief. So that way it should be out of the way with and in the loom. This gives me the ability to do a quick change because these fans will probably go out. And next up, I'm gonna do these hot end wires. I've just cut them so that they fit in this green connector here. So I'll go ahead and just trim them a little bit here with a wire stripper. You might have to clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and crimp some ferrules on this guy to use ferrules if you can. Now these are long, so I, I am gonna have to cut the ends off a little bit, but that should be fine. Just make sure that whatever ferrule you're using, do the tug test, make sure it's not moving around on you. I'll repeat for the other one. And now I'm gonna just trim maybe a couple, just a little bit, maybe about half, because that's really not a very deep terminal. I might have got that one a little shorter than I wanted, but that should be fine. So now we're going to come over here and basically insert them in. Okay, that one's in. And then I'll do the other one. Tighten that one down. You want a good solid connection there. All right, those are pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the thermistors. I went ahead and cut it. I am going to run it kind of down here and then connect. When you're doing, when you when you are crimping this, make sure that um, you're going to be able to clear your motor mounts with your wiring. So you don't want to dip down. It might even be better to run it up high, but I've got plenty of clearance there, so I'm not concerned. Just something to keep an eye on. All right, I've gone ahead and cut these to length so that they're going to fit for the extruder motor here in the corner. These were, um, this is using the regular size JST XH. In fact, you could even use the one that comes with the LGX Lite, but I went ahead and shortened it so it's right there. I've got all the connectors plugged in now and at this point I'm ready to zip tie things up and clean this mess up a little bit. I've just kind of cleaned it up and I think it looks pretty good. Keep in mind how it looks from the front too. So from the front you want your Voron looking real nice and pretty and you want to make sure that you can clear the sides without any issue which I can. Nothing's rubbing. So as long as you've got that going for you you should be in pretty good shape there. And go ahead and take off the extra connectors and keep your pins if you have any left and just set those in the middle fly blocks so you can use them later. And now might be a good time to go ahead and connect the top part of the wiring. There's also a chip here and I found a heat sink so I just went ahead and stuck the heat sink on there because I think you're probably supposed to do that. Keep it cool. So the fan voltage selection is um, the, are these three jumpers so you can either go 5 volt, 12 volt or VCC. I'm going to go VCC which would be 24 volt because that's what I'll be supplying so i'm going to go ahead and jumper that so you can see that i've added the jumper right here it's definitely easier to add these jumpers without the stuff zip tied but it's not hard getting it in there too i wanted to get everything kind of wired up first so i've got two jumpers on here now i've got the one here for the fan voltage being 24 volt or vcc because that's what i'm running to it and then I've also added this jumper here right by this capacitor. That's just to signify that this is the last scan bus in the, and it's the only one, but you have to have that on there. There's still quite a bit to do with the configuration in terms of the software now that we've got everything wired up. I would also recommend that before you zip tie anything up that you configure your board and you may need to disconnect it to do that. It's probably not a bad idea. Just stay tuned for a future video where I will cover that in depth.